Yo, good afternoon, viewers of YouTube. My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Crypto and a Cold One. Today's featured guest is Sierra Nevada's Beer for Drinking. It's called BFD. Um, no cap on it, so I had to get one, Tad. Ooh, baby, it's getting tall. Mm. So, in today's episode, we're going to discuss two unheard of cryptocurrency projects to the general crypto public. These are projects that are going to do very well in the coming months with a high likelihood of 10xing. So let's stop messing around and get right into it. The first project I'd like to discuss is the highly coveted in the cryptocurrency inner circles with Neo Global Capital investing a hefty sum recently. But it's still not discussed enough in the public. That project is Certike. Certike is a hidden gem that you've been waiting to stumble upon. So what is Certike? It is a formal verification framework to mathematically prove smart contracts and blockchain ecosystems that they are basically bug free and hacker resistant. To scale this verification, they have developed a layer based approach to decompose proof tasks into smaller ones. These smaller proof obligations are then encoded into Certike's transactions and then proved and validated by participants in the network. Currently, the reliability and security of software systems, including blockchains and smart contracts, is confirmed through testing and testing alone. This is great to show the presence of bugs, but it's not great to show their absence. Now, there is QuantStamp, which proposes a verification protocol for smart contracts written in Solidity. It utilizes traditional model checking and requires a massive amount of human effort reviewing the source code and writing specifications. This severely limits its scalability. Certike, on the contrary, has developed an approach to labeling dApp systems using smart labels. Smart labels will utilize AI deep learning to understand the programs not only at the syntax level, but also at the semantics level. This will allow the framework to add proper labels to the source code automatically. The team is among the first to achieve modular verification through a concept they developed called layer deep specifications. This technique uncovers the insights of layered design patterns and makes it possible to decompose a complex proof task into smaller ones at the proper abstraction level. So these decomposed proof tasks are much easier to understand when broken down and can even be solved by automatic verifiers. The proof engine is freely pluggable, which means more advanced solving algorithms can be added to the system at will. The Certike network creates machine checkable proof objects, which constructs mechanized proofed objects so that these proofs can be quickly checked by anyone using their own machine, such as a computer. Proofs are validated using mining and the Certike app. The entire Certike network introduces a new mining scheme called Proof of Proof. It involves the distribution of Certike tokens as incentives. The computational difficulties of Proof of Proof lie in the search for concrete problems. Five different roles are included. First is the customers. They submit programs, systems, and proof obligations that need verification by broadcasting a special proof request transaction. Associated with this is a Certike incentives offered to anyone who constructs the proofs. Second are bounty hunters who share their computational resources for a share of the Certike incentives. They construct and broadcast proof objects to be validated. You need to possess a certain amount of Certikes to take part in this role. Third are checkers, and they get Certike incentives by recording regular transactions and by checking submitted proof objects. Checkers only get a small portion of the Certike incentives when a bounty hunter proof object is validated. Fourth are the sages, and they are the ones who plug in their proof engines via the open protocol. Their engines can be randomly used by bounty hunters and evaluated through A-B testing. They also can receive some of the Certike incentives depending on the evaluation results of their engines. High performance engines will be studied and spread by the Certike community. So fifth are users. These are the people and enterprises who can subscribe to Certike's certified libraries and IDE plugins to build their own dApps and systems with the Certike tokens. 
Unfortunately, Serta K is not trading yet, nor has the ICO commenced. So if you're outside of the United States and get the chance to participate, get into this one. You will not be sorry. Let's now talk about a coin who has started trading and is a significant component to an ecosystem I love, Icon. So it's the Icon ecosystem we're talking about. And what could that project be? It is Bizant. So I talked about this project last week and I just scratched the surface, but I'm thinking this project deserves a better itch. So Bizant is a decentralized payment protocol that provides payment solutions in a fast, secure, and reliable way. The Bizant blockchain will be integrated with the Jimmy payment network. This network aggregates hundreds of payment methods from around the world and can be easily topped up with the Jimmy wallet using user preference focused payment method. So what's unique about Bizant is the use of private and permission blockchains. Initially, the Bizant blockchain will be created using hyperledic fabric technology. So since the Bizant blockchain is based on private and permission networks, an identity authentication service is required for use. The key role of the Bizant blockchain is providing its partners the ability to accommodate multiple users and multiple channels simultaneously. So the only way for this is to scale is through a private and permission design. Mentioned before is the Jimmy wallet. This is what end users will interface with and is powered by the Jimmy payment platform. The wallet UI will allow multiple functions, including topping up the wallet through bank transfers, prepaid cards, cash payments, cryptocurrencies, and more. So when a user tops up their account, the balance appears as a local currency. The wallet allows purchases and payments for both physical and digital goods in their local currencies. This is ideal for emerging markets where credit cards are not common. Users have the option to pay with Bizant tokens, which provides an incentive by allowing no transaction fees. The wallet also allows transfers, which is very similar to the payment functions. Users can transfer the way they choose, fiat, crypto, or combination of both. One of the key features of the wallet is a link to an external cryptocurrency exchange for the Bizant token or any other cryptocurrency to be converted into any other. Think of Bizant like this. It is the stellar for Korea. This is the payment rails that will be used by a ton of projects on the ICON platform as well as a ton of businesses in Korea. Now, Bizant was just listed on CoinMarketCap and just started trading on an exchange, IDEX. Currently, the price is about $0.18 cents per token, which is almost a 2x from the ICO price of $0.10. Cents. Now, I believe Bizant is going to get added to most of the major Korean exchanges, but the one I believe will come first is BitThumb. Why? Bizant's chief cryptocurrency officer is the founder and former CEO. Bizant is just a plain out buy right now. Well, viewers, thanks for taking this time to watch this episode of Crypto in a Cold One. Two very, very unknown projects in the cryptocurrency space, but give it about two to three weeks and both these projects will be highly known and every crypto YouTuber will be talking about them. Well, cheers, viewers. Thanks for watching.